Back in 2008, I started work at a call center, and in my training group, I got to know two very specific individuals. I forget who their names were, but uh, as we got to talking, we learned that we were playing WoW. I told them that I was into PvE content, I was for the Alliance. Both of them specifically mentioned that they do only PvP content. And they sort of referred to this as, if you're doing PvE content, it's like you're using the baby weights in a gym. And there was something about that that didn't sit right with me because I was getting the impression here that they were saying I was playing the game incorrectly. And the thing is, I'm not really interested in PvP content. I tried getting into it, it just didn't really interest me. This was sort of a situation where we just agreed to disagree, even though they sort of super insisted that I do PvP content. I just dismissed it and moved on. And there's a reason that I bring this all up here. I consider myself to be a casual or solo World of Warcraft player. I usually like to refer to myself as being casually hardcore. That being said, I will usually dip my toes into some PvP content from time to time, and I may dip my toes into a Mythic Zero from time to time when I can get my act together and really focus on doing really well. But that being said, I think I tend to enjoy the world of Warcraft more than the Warcraft. And let me explain that here. Greetings, friends and everyone. My name is Dreyfuseno of the Zenoic Brotherhood, and this is a small wish list of quality of life items that have been on my mind maybe for patch 9.2.5 and beyond, if there's time for it. My goal here is to suggest items that may not necessarily take up a lot of time, and a few of my pipe dreamy ideas here or there. Disclaimer, I do not expect these things to happen. These are simply just my ideas. That's it. If I get more ideas here in the future, there may be a part two to this, or it may just be a one-off video. Also, with that being said, this video is coming out after the announcement of the World of Warcraft expansion of Dragonflight. This video will be separated into four specific chapters, so you can jump to the section that means the most to you. Now, these four specific chapters I have labeled as thus. Chromie Time specific, Shadowland specific, Post Endgame specific, and Random Bits. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Section one, Chromie Time specific ideas. More items in the Warlords of Draenor expansion should be bind on account specifically the Warlords of Draenor building plans for the garrison and the Rush Orders. These Rush Orders will allow you to complete items and projects in the various Warlords of Draenor garrison buildings. If we're going to be leveling through the Warlords of Draenor content again with Shadowlands, then why not make these Rush Orders bind on account? I can set up my alt's garrisons to generate a lot of garrison resources, and then have them actually get these rush orders, send these rush orders to my main character, and then I can say farm Savage Bloods, get those rush orders, and just get a lot of them flowing in. That'd be very helpful. That and improving the rewards you can get from the Warlords of Draenor mission table would be a little bit helpful too. In these screenshots here, Trader Aranda in your garrison sells you mid-range follower gear tokens, specifically used for your garrison mission table. It would be helpful if these gear tokens were max level, because by the time I've gotten to max level, I'm already moving on to endgame content, so it would be helpful if this was expedited along just a little bit. I located two NPCs that sell books that specifically upgrade your character to level 1 garrison building plans and level 2 garrison building plans, but I was not able to find ones for level 3, so why not have a book specifically for the WAD building plans for level 3? Unnerf the salvage yard 
from the Warlords of Draenor Garrison. Now, you're probably not going to be spending a lot of time in Chromie Time in the Warlords of Draenor Garrison, but it would be helpful to have some rewards from that specific mission table that would be helpful for leveling. This could apply for the Naval Shipyard mission table as well, things for like weapons, swords, shields, armor, etc. Now, I'm not sure if this was an, an intended change or not, but I'm going to get one of these Savage Bloods and come over here to this vendor. Now, if I trade this Savage Blood for one of these coin purses, it's supposed to give me 50 gold. Now, for some reason, I only get a handful of silver. Now, was this an intended change or not? Because it would still be nice to have this vendor for 50 gold. So it could be another way to get some gold early on. Every future expansion that has a mission table should always have a buy it on account tradable item for its resource. Now, the reason that I bring this up, Warlords of Draenor does not have a tradable buy it on account item to trade between alts. The closest thing that comes up is the huge ogre cache seen here. Now, yes, I can go and purchase it through the auction house for between 5 to 10k, depending on prices, and it sometimes shows up in the mission table. Now, it would be nice if, say, there was a huger ogre cache and have that be the BOA item, but it would be nice to have something more accessible. Legion has the Blood of Sargeras vendor, Battle for Azeroth has the BOA vendor, and of course Shadowlands has Anima. I noticed that the level 1 garrison had a hearthstone table, but the level 2 and level 3 garrisons don't have one. Were level 2 and level 3 garrisons going to have hearthstone tables at some point, but they just didn't get added? Oh, and one thing I didn't realize, it looks like the garrison workers really like doing their squats here, as you can see. There should be more ways to fast track leveling alts other than speeding up the leveling process again and again. Things like the pre-patch leveling experience in Legion with the Legion invasions. I loved the fact that I could take a fresh alt, go to these invasions, and fast track leveling alts to the next cap of experience. I didn't necessarily mind having to level through the Legion experience because it made it a little bit easier to actually go through that experience because of this. I would love to have time walking be up perpetually, and not just that, still have it cycle through the usual expansions that it does, but have it start at level 10 because I have noticed that you can level through dungeons from 10 to 50. Why not have that be from 10 to 60? I would love to see brawls become levelable from 10 to 60 or whatever the new cap is going to be. And I think doing something like Comp Stomp would be a nice way to be an introductory thing for PvP aspects, showing people how to do a Wrathy Basin, even if it's super quick, because you're going to be doing a Rathy Basin again and again. It might be a repetitive training thing, but it might be helpful. The Mists of Pandaria scenarios, heroic scenarios, and the training ground seems like great potential to have some leveling options through there. I suppose I'm curious as to why the scenarios haven't been used that much previously, but if they could be tuned to level, there's another option right there. And having a weekly for the training grounds should be an option to show me how to tank, heal, or DPS in a non-toxic environment. If there was something in a previous expansion that was endgame, that should be the, the new level 50 cap. As an example, Horrific Visions from Battle for Azeroth. This would be a great way to encourage players to level through old expansions. I would love to be able to level through Torghast once Shadowlands goes into Chromie Time specifically and be able to load that character up with entry-level gear so that they can get into the new content of 10.0 whenever it is that's ready. I liked how the 50% leveling buff came back temporarily just before the launch of Season 4 of Shadowlands It'd be nice if I could see that come back just a little bit more, too. It would be nice to have the Heart of Azeroth and the Legendary Cape from Battle for Azeroth be sort of a training legendary for new players so that they could get used to what a legendary actually is. Because if I was to go and get the Heart of Azeroth and the Legendary Cape, it's not effective because it's not usable beyond level 50. There should be a vendor that allows you to trade in old currencies either for something useful 
gold, or a BOA item that you could trade currencies between alts. Now, depending on whatever it is that currency is, I may or may not have use for it, and it's honestly just going to take up currency space in my currency tab, and I realize that's only saying so much here, but it's sort of pointless for me to have 20,000 of this, 10,000 of this, and only have it be just either mug or something that, that isn't useful to me specifically. That being said, that is giving me a video idea to explore where some of these currencies actually come from and see whether or not it's useful to actually utilize that currency. I'm a bit of an altaholic. I love seeing different classes, different tanks, different healers, different damage dealers, and see how I can do things a little bit more creatively on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, that being said, sometimes I don't get enough boosts to help me along here. It feels like I should be getting more boosts in a grind sooner and not later. An example of this is the Cypher research in Corthia. I felt less compelled to complete that. It felt like it would have been nice to have some sort of mission table adventure to be able to get some of that stuff. But that being said too, I do like how the Xerath Mortis 50% uh, uh, boost came out fairly quickly and that's good. It'd be nice to have some catch up gear for 10.0 almost right away when a 10.0 does come out. Because the thing is, I'm probably going to be farming Shadowlands Anima for some of the Xerath Mortis gear that's still there so that I feel like I have a chance going into 10.0 itself. Section 2. Shadowlands specific content. This is specifically for Shadowlands as it stands right now before it becomes post endgame content. I've gone through each of my alts here previously and used this level 40 and or level 60 renown item to get all of my alts up to a specific level of renown. Now, when I use this item, it always gives me a, a covenant specific mount and some anima. Now, I've learned all four of these mounts here and you'll see these images on screen, but with each of the alts that I take through each of these covenants of my choosing, I have these duplicate mounts here and they honestly just take up bag space and it feels a little bit weird to either put them into my bank or to just destroy them. Would it be possible to have these be vendorable just for a copper? Because it seems like it should be possible to not have these mounts drop again and again when I've already learned these four mounts and there's no other mounts that I could possibly learn from using this Renown item boost. It would be nice if the Shadowlands mission table had some sort of adventures that actually award Corthian Codex rep and research points. Now, I've gone to Ardenweald a few times to do this elite quest you see on screen right here. And when I have all of the Ardenweald specific covenant callings, sometimes when I'm doing this elite world quest, I don't get credit for these quests specifically, and it feels like I should be getting that credit. Now, this is more of a random idea that I got for Torghast specifically, so follow me here for just a moment. Imagine going to Torghast and there's a brand new vendor there that sells you anima powers for a run through Torghast. Imagine being able to use Soul Ash, Soul Cinders, and Cosmic Flux to get the common, uncommon, and rare anima powers. And what about being able to start a Torghast run with a very specific build? I would love to be able to just go through Torghast with some very specific builds and just wreck house through Torghast. That would be so kick awesome. Maybe even having a Torghast hard mode where you could have an NPC there that specifically turns the anima powers off. What's going to happen with the first iteration of the Great Fault that's currently in Oribos right now? How is it going to work once Dragonflight is active? Because it seems like there are a handful of items that can be earnable, but they're only earnable through Mythics. I would like to still be able to go back and get those items specifically, and maybe still get the items that I can get 3,000 gold from them if it's possible, but I'd still like to be able to get Anima and some of that other stuff if it's possible as well. It would be nice if the Wisps of Memory item from Shadowlands was purchasable on a vendor come Dragonflight. Section 3. Post Endgame Content. What happens to Endgame Content when it's no longer 
endgame content. More account-wide upgrades. The items that come to mind here are of course the Torghast box of many things, and the Mechagon rep tokens. Make the Soul Twining Crescent be bind on account. On my main warrior, I've been able to get all of my conduits up to I level 200, and it sort of made getting these items ineffective for me and I don't really need them anymore. It'd be nice to be able to trade these to alts so that I can focus on conduits that I don't have properly upgraded. Sometimes the Covenant Combing boxes drop two of the exact same conduit. I'm a little bit confused as to why that happens. If I cannot add the second conduit into my conduit tree, what's the point of having duplicates of the exact same conduit if they're the exact same eye level? Also, why can't I just be able to vendor them? I honestly end up just destroying the copy conduit, and it seems like they should be vendorable like the relics in Legion. And finally, section four, random bits. These suggestions here don't really have any other place, so this is more just a random hodgepodge of my ideas I've collected over my time playing the game. More control over the selfie camera. So here I am using the selfie camera, and I'm realizing here that while I'm using the selfie camera, I am making emotes at random times, and that's a little bit weird. It would be nice if either I could keep just a totally straight face the entire time, or have control over these emotes. Say, for example, if I'm trying to say something serious, I'm not doing the laughing emote or vice versa. It would be nice if a handful of these buildings in both Stormwind and Orgrimmar, as you're gonna see here in some of these screenshots, are opened up a little bit more here for roleplay purposes. It would be nice if the restored artifacts from the archeology span profession were bind on account as well, because I've utilized restored artifacts, but there's not a lot that interest me in that profession other than the Vial of the Sands recipe. I would love to be able to farm up restored artifacts on my alt characters that need to level, hand them to my alchemist, and have that be a slightly quicker way to get the relics that I need to farm up the Vial of the Sands plan. In my WoW journey, I have farmed up this plan for the Sandstone Drake at least twice now, and it has been its own kind of frustrating, but satisfying once I do finally get the plans themselves. I think leave the grind with the canoptic jars in the actual grind itself, but just I think one thing that can be improved is making artifacts bind on account. This is more of a personal request, but would it be possible to update the outfits worn by the female warlords of Draenor Garrison workers so they aren't wearing Winter's Veil vale bikinis during Winter's Veil? Vale? I would prefer something akin to the disposable Winter's Veil vale suits. They are more Great Father Winter themed, and they're much, much warmer. It would be nice if the gazebo area in Stormwind and this area in Ironforge automatically dismounted you. Would it be possible to make LFR soloable? This would be perfect for those that just want to watch the current story cinematics and piece everything together. I want to see the story, but it seems like I have to resort to YouTube videos if I want to piece things together for a current story's arc. I like the idea of contracts, but not this iteration of contracts. The tooltip is not clear as to how much rep it gives for a specific faction or reputation. I have had to learn that you can only get 10 reputation per activity, and that does not feel rewarding to me. Now, I'm not asking for it to fast track me from honored to revered in a reputation, but I feel like I would have to go through multiple contracts for them to be useful or rewarding. Something in the neighborhood of 100 to 250 rep would feel a little bit better. One idea I had when coming up with this idea, maybe have the contracts rep scale with content. Maybe so much for rares, so much for world quests, etc more neutral stages to perform on. This idea is more for the WoW companion app for iOS and Android. It would be nice if I could organize my alts and characters by realms in the mobile app. Now I go to this main menu here and it's just showing a random list of my characters per account. It'd be nice if I could actually see what realm they're on specifically. That and also I would love to be able to have a way to be able to level my characters through the mobile app as well. Say pet battles. 
As of the recording of this video for the new expansion of Dragonflight, I have come to learn that there's not going to be any borrowed powered systems like Azerite or Anima, etc. But if you do have to do that sometime in the future, it would be nice if that currency for that power is put right into its own bank and that it doesn't take up inventory slots. Like with Anima here, it would be nice if there was just one item that says you get this much power and not have it be multiples of items. Maybe have an unlockable toy that functions as a multi-use mission table for older expansions. Maybe even including Shadowlands once 10.0 drops properly. I don't know whether or not Future expansions beyond 10.0 are going to use mission tables, but you can roll in those expansions as they come out and as they become post-end game content. Bring back old legendaries and old content that have been removed from the game for other people to access. Now, I had to really think about this one. This particular number isn't necessarily tied to just one or two things. There are a lot of different items, a lot of different content, and a lot of different legendaries that have come and gone in the World of Warcraft life cycle. I'm thinking the Garona follower from Warlords of Draenor, I'm thinking the legendary ring content, and a couple of other different things here or there. Something that comes to mind is the Timeless Isle and the legendary cape content that came with it. Now, I seem to recall that you needed some sort of legendary item to actually get within these walls. And then when you could, there was a boss or something very special that you could get here. Now that we're in this Shadowlands expansion exploration experience, I'm curious to see what's back here because I never got that legendary item. And I'm aware of the fact that Blizzard likes to make things special and unique and time-gated from time to time. I don't have a problem with that. That's perfectly fine. But at the same time, because I never personally got this legendary item, it could be 10 expansions down in the future and everything, and I could never ever see what this is because I wasn't quick enough to find this item. Maybe reactivate the quest line here temporarily and allow players to try to get this cape one more time so that they can see this content. Because what's the point of having this here now? If a quick wowhead search tells me that I can't go in here, then okay, I guess I'm gonna move on then. One thing that was brought to my attention was removing the requirement to have the legendary item to begin with. So I'm curious to see what was so important now, and let me see what's in there. At the end of the day, I love this game. I love the characters, the lore, and the world that continues to reveal itself from expansion to expansion, from the current content to the post end game content. I love the silly ideas it gives me for making Machinima and my improv comedy. Like many others, this game helped me find my voice. I want to see this game continue to thrive and continue on for as long as Azeroth has Azrite pumping in her veins. I want Azeroth to show off the best of what she has so it can be its best self. I'm inspired by creators like Want to Buy Gold, Kraken Latte, Soul So Breezy, even the Red Shirt Guide, to name just a few. I've only been to BlizzCon twice, and I love seeing how the Red Shirt Guy got a round of applause from one of the Q&As from the audience for being who it is he was and what he did previously. I honestly hope that I can yes and every one of these creators in my own way. Now, I recognize that Blizzard does not want WoW to become a sandbox game, but the thing is, post-endgame content almost, almost becomes sandbox material. When an expansion becomes post-endgame content, it's almost as if that expansion becomes frozen in time, never to be updated again. Maybe, maybe getting a few hot fixes here or there. Like for example, let's just say down the road, once 11.0 comes out, the same thing's gonna happen to Dragonflight. It's gonna be chromified as well. Whether or not it had a good or bad reception, the same thing's going to happen again. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm pretty sure once 10.0 runs its course and 11.0 is ready, I'm probably going to be revisiting 10.0 content like I'm going to be revisiting with Shadowlands here at some point. So, 
Am I playing the game wrong by just being casually hardcore? I would say no, I'm not. I still love the game, and I can love the game even if I'm not doing Mythic Plus, raiding, or PvP that often. But until next time, I am Dreyfus Sano. I will see you at Season 0 of my content, I Matter, You Matter, Dionysica, and Arcanon Poros. Thank you.